which was the name of the class, and, and they sank the aircraft carrier that that class was named after. So they were hotter than hornets, I'm sure, to get this submarine. And I know they did some damage to her, so that may be what those patches are from. Out of the 106 to 119 depth charges that were dropped on her, 56 came within distance to do serious damage to her. And she was very lucky to have survived that. So those very likely could be from depth charge damages caused in that very attack, which is pretty amazing itself. Let's go look around the other side, see if we can find some more damages about in the same areas. All right, we're on the other side now. And there's not a sidewalk, so I don't know if I'm supposed to be walking here or not, but I'm not gonna hurt anything. Let's just sit and look and see if we can find any damages. I don't know what these things are, but they're really long. They're probably a third the length of the submarine. I don't know if they have something to do with the submarine or if they're just being stored here. No idea. They have no markings or no wording on them, so I don't know what it is. It's not big enough to hold torpedoes. No idea. Okay, I'm running into uniform size holes. They could be battle damage repairs, I guess. But they look too uniform in size to be that. But there's another thing that I'm not, and that's a welder or a damage assessor. I'm neither one of those things, so I don't know what those spots are or what those spots could be but I haven't seen any plates welded on the outside on, on this side like there was on the other I think those plates on the other side are obvious uh, battle damage yeah, there's there's a lot of uniformity to these so that may be an original construction and there's another small round one. That may be battle damage. I'd love to know how thick that is. But that looks to be the only one on this side of the ship that could even closely be battle damage. That could be battle damage. It's got a square hole in the middle of it, but that may be because there was some kind of special plug or something that was used for it. This right here, no idea what this is. Not battle damage though, because there's a valve there or a opening. That may be to fill it with fresh water, who knows, could be anything. All right, we are at the end. There are some spots right there. Uh, they look uniform, but they could be battle damage. And just the same guy repaired them, and that's why they look uniform. Possibility? Don't know. Y'all let me know. All right, let's get the drone in there and see what this looks like from above. And now it gives me great pleasure to present to you Captain James B. Kassler, retired, who was a navigator of the Kavala during the memorable scenes you have just witnessed. It's good to see you again, Jug. Glad to see you, Admiral, and I must say I got a real kick out of reliving the Kavala's first combat patrol. Your leap year lady surely lived up to a lucky christening, didn't she? I'm proud to say that she did. That decision to pass up a perfect shot at that first carrier must have been an awfully tough one for your skipper to make. Yes, he said it was just about the toughest he'd ever faced. It surely made us all unhappy at the time. Well, it certainly paid off, not only in your sinking of Shokaku and possibly Albacore's getting Tai Ho, but in saving the lives of uncounted numbers of Marines and GIs on Saipan. As you know, very few of our submarines were lucky enough to so much as see a carrier during the whole war. So when we had to pass our first chance, we were pretty sure there'd never be another. 
Well, when the miracle did happen two days later, you certainly proved you were ready to handle it. Congratulations on a fine job. Thank you, Admiral. Restrooms available. Men, women, men, women, women, men, women, men. Out here in Galveston, you never know what you're going to run into. Somebody on a paddle boat fishing, a ferry boat. An old junker following the ferry boat. Or even a giant supply ship. Possibly a destroyer. Or even a submarine every now and then. Come to Galveston. Check it out for yourself. There's no telling what you'll see. Okay, here's why I wanted you to stick around. Help me figure out what this is. I think I have figured it out, but there's no signs to tell you for sure. I think I know what it is. Let me know what you think. That right there. What is that thing? Has a hatch on the side. Has a hatch on top. Looks like it has a periscope. I've walked all the way around it. Can't figure out what it is. There's a conning tower sitting next to it. It's not the conning tower off the Kabbalah. Don't know where it's from. Give me your ideas what you think that is. And thanks for sticking around. I've had a great day out here at the USS Kabbalah. Uh, it's absolutely an amazing ship. More, more amazing than I remember. And like I keep saying, it's been 20 years or so since I've been here. But it's an absolutely amazing ship. If you're ever in the area or live in the area and it's been a long time or you've never been to this submarine, man, you gotta come. You just gotta come. If you're a World War II buff, you, you, you got to see inside that thing. It's amazing. I hate that I had to finish out the video on my telephone. As a matter of fact, as soon as I leave here, I'm on my way to the store to buy a bigger and maybe a couple more SD cards. This won't happen again anyway. The feeling I got in that ship, I think uh, most World War II buffs would get inside that ship. Uh, I, I, yeah, 
can't explain it. It's just weird. I, uh, I, I really enjoyed being in there today. Uh, I enjoyed taking you folks along with me too, and I'm sorry I had to finish out the end of this video on my telephone. Uh, but I'm glad you stuck around to the end of it, and I appreciate that. Like I always say, it's been a Jeep, a drone, and an old man. We'll be seeing you next time. Do I need to cut that fingernail or what? And that's a real pair of jeans when you've had them so long you've worn them out. Close my book. Like you, look, look, see there, see there? It did not fire. Now, did I get a defect? Has a little hint of chicken. He wants to get it right out of my mouth. Which I'm gonna let him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pass it inside, pass it inside. Uh, he's got, uh, yeah. Try to back up a little bit. <laughs>